Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to my channel. Well, today we're going to take a look at the Mavic Air 2. I know a lot of you wanted me to review this drone, and I received it about a week ago from the DJI store. And uh, I've been out flying it every now and then in dull weather, sunny weather, just to check out the specs and how cool it is. So, you know, let me cut right to the chase. You're probably watching a lot of these videos, and you're watching them because you want to know if you want to buy this drone. So I'm going to tell you right now. I'm a drone reviewer. I review every drone on the market, not just DJI. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Mavic Air 2 is probably the drone to buy in the year 2020. So far, anyways, I have not found a drone yet that is better than the Mavic Air 2 with this offers for the price. Now, pay attention to that. The price is $799 US, at least that's what it is in my country, my area of the world. That is an outstanding price for what you get for the features that are built into this thing. Certainly, there's newer drones on the market, like you have the Autel Evo 2, 8K, and 6K. Those are better drones than this, but check out the price on them. You could buy this drone, and with the savings of not buying the more expensive drone, go on vacation and uh, take this with you and still have a lot of fun. Take photos and videos, and they would look pretty much as amazing as you would get, uh, you know, from those other drones. If you're not doing it for a commercial purpose, if you're in a commercial purpose to make money, then you'd probably want the other drones. They're pretty good for that. Now, I do live in Canada, and mine did come with the ADSB right here, which is basically a new system that is in the drones that are sold in North America, and it's supposed to notify me that there's a plane nearby if the plane has a certain device on it that sends out the signal that would be picked up. Anyways, I've flown this for a week and I can hear planes, but I don't get any notification on my phone. So that tells me that the planes probably don't have it incorporated or there's something a little bit different in Canada. As I keep flying, I'm sure I'll see it. One quick mention on the props on the Mavic Air 2 is that they do incorporate the idiot-proof design that DJI uses on all its other props. In other words, they put a little white circle on one of the props and on the motor there's bit of white as well so you match up white to white and black to black the problem is is that uh, on the Mavic Air 2 you can actually put the white circled prop on the black and it will fit and it will actually work and it will cause your drone to do the funky chicken where it just flops all over the place on the ground and probably break something so you have to be mindful when you're putting the props on make sure you get the white with the white and the black with the black all right, I'm going to power this baby up and put it on the ground because I want to show you the interface on the app. There's something that's a little bit different. Well, at least for me, it was a little bit different things I had to find. But anyways, here, let me just show you. All right, so I've got the Mavic Air 2 sitting on the ground over there. And while it's powering up, let me show you the controller. I love this controller. Check out the back. There's nice little rubber grips. That is really nice. And guess what? No buttons on the back. I love controllers with no buttons on the back because I always touch them by accident. So on some of the DJI controllers, especially for the Mavics, they put this little switch here, you know, for tri pod sport and normal they stick it on the side i don't like it on the side because your hand hits it i like it right in the center so this is really good these joysticks do come off and you can store them down here there's little holes for them there so if you're traveling and you want to save some space this little button up here is your function button and that one there when you hit it you can customize it it's really decent you only get like three choices so you hit it does something you double tap it tap tap and it does something else but you can customize it in the app and this one over here it's got a little picture of a camera on it if you're flying and all of a sudden you see something you want to take a photo of vice video or you want to take a video of vice photo you hit that and it just switches whatever mode you're in if you're in photo mode it switches to the video if you in video mode switches you to photo normal jog dial is there to move the gimbal up and down make sure in your settings you set the gimbal to look above horizon or else you're going to miss out on some great experiences and of course over here you have your record button this large bracket at the back that is your antenna and i can pull it out it goes quite large but you couldn't fit you can see that's that's about it so you're not going to fit an ipad mini in there at the bottom you have you could probably see it little it looks like two cables right here so one of them is in here to connect to the actual controller and then it comes all the way out wraps around this here antenna and goes to the other side so that's the one you pull out and you attach to your phone Let's see if i can show you while i've got the camera without getting my big fingers in the way here so i'm gonna try to push it out Oh, I got it out. There we go. So that is it. So this is the cable right here. That's going to go to your cell phone. So you just pull out the antenna and your cell phone falls inside. There we go. And uh, it's pretty good because on my phone, I got a lot of buttons on the side and a case. And a lot of times these type of uh, holders will push the buttons. But uh, no, I haven't pushed the buttons at all on this one so far. It's really good. All right. So I'm going to sit over on the side. I'm going to show you my phone display up here. So the app you're going to use is the DJI Fly app. 
All right, so what I want to show you is at the very top, you see it shows you where I am. It says Petrie Island Park, and I'm in an enhanced warning zone. See beside it, it says Fly Spots. I'm going to tap that and watch what comes up. It's going to show me a map of where I am, and it's going to show me if there's any warnings or areas around my map. I'm going to zoom out. Let me just zoom out here, get my little fingers working. So I don't see any circles anywhere showing me there's anything bad. I do see to the north of me, there's a big airport. See that big blue square? It says that's an airport, stay away from that. And if I go out farther, I can see the international airports and other things. Now I see a way more happening. But that's about it, so I'm gonna zoom back into me. So it looks like my fly spots are good. Now, if you look at the bottom right, it says nearby fly spot zero. So there's no place for me to fly nearby, it shows. I, I don't know. Maybe, it, maybe in your area of the world, you actually have it saying something other than zero, but in my area of the world, it says zero. All right, let's go back into the app. If you fly and your videos are cached to the phone, in other words, everything is recorded in your phone, if you want to see the videos you took, this is where you see them. If you look at the bottom left, it says album. You would hit that and it would show you all your videos. So even when you're not connected to the drone, just hit album. You could be at home, sitting on the couch, hit the album, and you can check out all the videos you took in that day or days previous. Let's hit go fly. All right, so we see my camera screen and I'm going to bring the gimbal up so it sees me. And there I am up there. Now quickly, if you're somebody who flies the DJI GO 4 app, you have a Mavic, you have a Phantom, and you've never used the DJI Fly app before, you're gonna be lost, because it's very different. It's very simplistic, it's made for beginners. This is not a professional app or interface whatsoever. This is designed 100% for your grandma. So I had to change my brain and think like my grandma would think to fly this thing and uh, use the interface, because honestly, it's, it's not, it's so simplistic. All right, here we go. So at the top left, you see it says end mode. Well, that end mode corresponds to your little controller here, whatever you put it in. You can't change it like some other things where you tap it and you change it. But uh, say you forgot to format your card, like this is a good example because I did forget to format my card. If I tap up where that end mode is, watch what happens. I get all this information. It shows me these are all my settings, my max uh, altitude, distance, altitude, and return to home. And there's my SD card, and I only have 37 gigs available, so I'm going to format it. Now I'm going to format it, so I'm going to pick SD card and format, and there we go. Same thing if you look over at the top right-hand side, see where your battery is. If I tap the battery, there I get the voltage for the battery and the temperature, so that can show me stuff. I, it's not really that important though because DJI does show you if I tap away. See, it shows right there I have 96%. That's what most of you will use. At the bottom left, you have your height and distance normal stuff plus your maps. If I click on the maps, there we go. I can make them even bigger. We've already sort of seen where I am. And there's a little I button at the top, which is info. Say I had something going crazy, like a plane coming by, I could hit that. And it shows me, what do I want to see? Restricted zones, altitude. These are all the things I've selected to see. And it just show up on my map. And the only thing, if you're a photographer or someone who really wants to get the best out of your Mavic Air 2, one that I suggest you highly use is the EV setting. See, it's down here. That's your exposure value. So in other words, on some sunny days and dull days, if you're aiming at the sun and you're trying to film something, it might look wrong, like too dark, underexposed, overexposed. That's where you adjust it, but you have to keep adjusting it because as you turn the drone in a different direction, then it might be overexposed or underexposed. So you have to reset that all the time. But a lot of times when I'm taking photos or whatever, and I want the best of the photos, not so much video, I will uh, move this up and down to either the plus or the minus to make it brighter or darker. Now we get over to the top right hand side of the screen and you have three dots and I'm going to click on that. The only thing you have to know is that they made it once again really idiot proof so you have one that talks about safety. So that's all your safety stuff. We've already seen that. So yes, put on your obstacle detection. If you don't put that on, you'll have no sensors forward and backwards. And you see the A pass? Very important. If you're going to do tracking and you want the drone to follow you and go under things and over things and around things, turn on a pass. And if you live in North America and you want your ADS-B to work, you have to turn on air sense and you can see it's right down there. So what I want to show you now is something that may elude you if you're used to professional drones and the way the interface works, where everything for the camera is in one spot. It's not the case here because they put it so simplistic. So watch this. Say I'm in camera mode. That's photo mode. And now I want to do certain settings. So if I click on it, my settings are basically when I go to photo. Hey, how do I pick my photo settings? I don't see anything there. It just says photo, single, 48, smart, AEB. Where's all the other good stuff about JPEGs or DNG, RAW, all that other stuff? You have to go into the other settings menu. So here I'm going to hit the three dots, go under camera, and there they are. If you're in video mode, let's go right here, video mode. 
Okay, I'm in video mode. Once again, basic settings can't change much. Hit the three dots and now you can change your format. You could change your color, normal or decine like if you're going to post edit it in post production, you know, like do the color correction and everything else. H265 or H264. And if you go in your control screen, that's where you allow upward gimbal rotation. You see, I have it on. That allows your camera to look up vice just horizontal and down so change that all right if you suffered through all that we're going to take it for a flight now and this is pretty much in depth i'm showing you everything there is on the mavic air 2 and i'm telling you right now you gotta buy this drone it is one of the best out there currently All right, our little Mavic Air is down there. It's been sitting, waiting for some time, saying, why aren't you flying me? So I'm just gonna pull these down and in. Watch what happens on my screen. I get a notice about the props. Make sure you got them on the right motor. So I'm gonna say check complete, they're all good. And uh, here we go. Take off. Now you're gonna notice it's not super noisy. And another thing, the obstacle avoidance is not on right now because it's on the ground. So let me just bring it up. And there's our obstacle avoidance. We have the beeps. Let me just move and I want to show you something. Now I'm standing right in front of the drone. You can see the drone right there and I'm right here. Look at my screen. Do you see anything that's flashing above it showing that there's something in front? Well, kind of. If you look on the top, you'll see a little bit of an orangey thing. See a way up where it says end mode and in flight. Watch when I move out of the way. It's gone. It's just your obstacle avoidance is pretty much this tiny little bar telling you that things are in the way. There, I'm back now, so it shows up. All right, so I'm standing right beside the Mavic Air 2, and I'm looking down at it, walking around here. Mike is on me. How noisy is that? I will tell you, it's not a noisy drone. You can fly this around, and most people probably would not even notice it's there. All right, so this is the part of the video where I'm going to show you all the features of the Mavic Air 2, all the cool stuff about it, and why you need to get this. So the first thing, let's look at how it records video, what the settings are. So let me just turn my record off here. Okay, now jump to my phone screen and take a look at what we have. There we have video, normal, 4K, 30. This entire video is gonna be recorded in 30 frames per second because that's what I've edited this video in. But I wanna show you something that's really good. So we have our video. The next column over, it says normal and HDR and slow motion. I wanna show you right now the HDR on here. So I've already taken two video segments. I did it once in normal mode and the second time in HDR mode and you're probably watching it right now. So you can actually see if there's a difference. Do you see a difference? So what I have noticed is that in HDR mode, the colors pop a bit more, which is really good. Normally in HDR mode, you use it to get rid of the shadows so that you can see details in the shadows and in the sky, the clouds. So you can see here, you might see a few more details in the shadows, the clouds, the sky, all that good stuff. So looking at my display, if you look on the top right or the right side, I'm in photo mode right now. And my options are single, 48 megapixels, smart, and AEB. So single is one single shot, 12 megapixels. 48 megapixel photo means you want high, super high definition. You're gonna like blow it up in a big poster size or whatever. It's really good. The camera works really well for that and smart. Smart is my favorite because smart photo adds vibrancy to your photos, so they look really, really good. They're very vibrant. It's the one I use all the time now. It's my favorite. AEB is taking three photos, underexposed, normal, and overexposed, and then squishing them together, and you get an image which looks kind of like HDR. I don't use that one at all. So here we go. Let me show you an example of these three photos. Now you're looking at my phone screen again. Check out on the right hand side. If I slide up, I'm still in photo mode. Go right to the bottom. I have pano. Let me click pano. And there's all my pano shots. If you're on vacation or someplace and you want to get more in your image in a photo, select these. So here I'm going to show you the pano shots right now. Here we go.
Back to my phone screen. Here we are in video mode still, and the next one down on the right is Quick Shots. See the Quick Shots? Quick Shots are like we used to have in all the DJI Mavics prior to this one, which is really good. They haven't added a new one. I was hoping they would have, but no, nah, there's nothing there. So you have your drone, your rocket, your circle, your helix, and then you go down to your boomerang and your asteroid. So I'll show you a few of the quick shots right here. Here we go. All right, we're back in video record now, and if you want to use this drone for active track, you're probably looking for active track on the screen. There is no such thing as active track on the screen. It's a permanent active track. You're probably saying, what is that? Let me show you. Look at my phone screen. I have nothing on but record, but I'll draw a box around me. There we go. So it knows I'm a human. And right now, if I start walking, I think it will just keep following me. So it will stay there. It won't do anything. So now you have the drone sitting right in one spot and I can move around. You can also use this if you see objects and I'll show you that in a second to do like a po visual point of uh, interest. So right now it's on me and it says, well, what do you want to do? Maybe I want it to <laughs> look it around here so I don't hit anything. Maybe I want it to orbit me. Look at the one on the right. I can hit orbit and it says, okay, you want to go slow? I'll go slow, hit go. And there she goes. Just make sure there's no targets that it can crash into. And you can see on my screen, I'm just going to wait till it gets with the sun behind it and I'll hit stop. All right. So I did that one. The center one where it's an eyeball, that will turn it off. And then on the one on the left, you have this one. So say I pick uh, trace. Uh, right now it's on trace and I hit the go. Whoop, hang on a sec. Trace, go. See, it says stop, but that's active track for following me. So watch if I move, it should follow me. Come with me, drone. So it's coming this way. And another thing I have to show you is I have the, uh, the A-pass on so that if I had to go around things like this, it should see this. It shouldn't crash into that tree. See, it went under it automatically. It's pretty cool. Here's another tree I'm going by, trying to kill it here. It should be pretty smart and make it under these trees. Just make sure you turn on the A-pass or else it won't work. And also, don't go under trees into the sun like this. That would be bad because it can't see that. So it's pretty smart. It doesn't need side sensors. Let me just get it around so it's the sun's behind it so you have a better image of me. So that right there to me is a feature that is worth like a million bucks. This, this is worth the price of admission for this drone. So hit me, let me hear a stop. Let me hit stop. So over here, I have a house and I'll pick the shed. See the shed over here? Let me just look down at it. There it is. I'm going to draw a square around that shed. There we go. It knows I want to active track that shed, but that shed's not moving anywhere. So what the heck is going on? All it is is a visual point of view. So if I fly the drone to the left or the right, as I'm doing here, it's turning. I'm not turning the drone. It's just locked on to that shed. So no matter what, up and down, I'm going up, it just keeps focusing on that shed. No longer do you have to do those goofy point of interest where you pick the object and do the radius or anything like that. So it's really cool. So what I want to show you now is how good this is with the A-pass and everything else. I did the active track walking around metal objects in a park. And I'll show you that here as I'm talking. You can see it's really good at missing the metal objects. I couldn't believe it because I was waiting for this clink, clink, clink to be smashing into things. Didn't smash into anything. It's really, really awesome. And I also used it on my skateboard. 
So I'm whipping around the same park on my skateboard, going through things, around things, uh, so that's at a higher speed because it has to think faster. And once again, it, the A-Pass is really good. It worked, it went under things. You can see here, I'm coming up to a tree. I go under the tree, no problem. Go around all objects. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. I really love it. All right, so there's also a slow motion feature on here. You have 120 frames a second or 240 frames a second. I'll show you the difference. I'll just go stand and jump off this picnic table behind me and then put it in slow motion. And you'll see me jump off in slow motion at 120 and 240. I'll put what they are below the uh, video. Check it out. All right, my drone is way up in the air and the next one I'm gonna show you is Hyperlapse. Here we go. Hyperlapse, you've seen it before. You have free mode where you can actually control the drone flying it very slowly and taking a photo every now and then that it's gonna convert into a video. You have circle mode where it's gonna do a rotation. You have course lock and you have waypoint. So what I'm gonna do is a circle mode. I'll try that one and I'm gonna to try to do a quick one or at least part of one. So it says, how long do you want this circle mode to be? It's going to take 4 minutes and 10 seconds. Frames are going to be 125. Interval, 2 seconds. You know, you can tap on these and change it. Uh, take a photo every 2 seconds. That's okay by me. Actually, I'll take a photo every 3 seconds. So if you took a photo every 2 seconds, 3, 4, 5, the longer the photos are apart, the more movement will happen in between them that you'll miss. So I'll put 3 seconds because I see people walking on the beach. Length, how long do I want this to be? If I say pick 5 seconds, it's going to take me 6 minutes and 15 seconds to complete. It's long. Speed. There's my speed. I can change the speed to make it go faster, but that's good. And there's my direction and it's up, but it's not gonna hit anything. Let me just focus on something here because you have to pick something. So I'm gonna pick a point of interest right there. Also pick the little house. There we go. So we are all set. I hit go. It's gonna start. And in six minutes and 15 seconds, <laughs> it will be completed. You can hear my microphone as it's going, it's snapping photos. So it's gonna snap uh, 125 photos. And here's that video now, check it out. So that was the hyperlapse. Now you can see the drone is away up in the air over the river, looking back at the beach. And uh, I'm gonna hit the return to home on here and see what happens. Go home. That beautiful sound says go home let's see how good this mavic air 2 is at precision landing so i can't even hear it or see it it's coming back i see the beach house so it must be up there someplace on my controller if you look at the bottom of my controller screen right there i'll show you that you notice the bottom there's a dot and it looks like a light coming out of it well those are my eyeballs the arrow above it is the drone so it says the way I'm standing now, if I look to my left, the drone is on my left. So, which it is, it's up there. There it is, way up there. So it's coming down, it's gotta miss this tree, it's gotta miss that tree, and it's gotta miss that tree, and land on this landing pad. Coming down, coming down, where's it gonna land? Well, it's darn close to the landing pad. It's either on it, or right beside it. Look at that, let me just get over here. Look at this thing. That is awesome. Oh, look at that, oh wow. All right, that's uh, pretty darn awesome. So for $7.99, you can get the Mavic Air 2 plus the remote control, plus a battery, plus a charger, and I think some extra props. I'm not sure what else you get. I don't think there's anything else, really. If you buy the Fly More package, you get the shoulder bag, same thing I just mentioned, plus you get uh, three batteries, Vice One, uh, a lot more props, and a few more extras in here. Nothing exciting. Plus you do get filters, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. So with the Fly More package comes a little case like this, which has three filters inside. You get an ND16, ND64, and an ND256. Only use the 256 for photos. Do not use it for video, that would be ridiculous. Uh, you can use the 64 on a super bright day if you really want to slow down the shutter and the 16 is also perfect for a sunny day. Now those filters are like beginner filters. They are great for people who are going to use filters once in a while, but not for pro photography. If you want to do pro photography, you're going to have to buy the pro filters and the pro filters are from Freewell right here. And these ones here are an ND4 816 and you get a polarized, then you get a polarized match with an ND8, a polarized match with a 32 and a 16 and even a 64. 
These are what a Pro would use because it has all the right configurations that you would use. And the quality of these over the quality that come with the DJI product is 100% different. So let me just show you here. I'm gonna go fly this here Mavic Air 2 and I'm gonna use the included DJI filter and tell me if you see a difference and I'll use the same, well not, do I have a 16 on here? I do have a 16 on here. And I'll use the Pro filter and you tell me if there's a difference. All right, here we go. Now the way I take the filters off these cameras are all cameras, this is just like the Mavic 2 Pro setting. I flip it upside down like that and then you just hold it in your hand make sure it's off <laughs> and then you spin the filter to the let's see which way is it spin oh this one looks like it wants to spin to the left so in other words i'm turning it this way so that would be counterclockwise and then i pull it off and i pull it off the piece of glass is off it's probably out of focus because i'm on a gopro here but uh, yeah there we go and now i'll put on the include it right here i'll put on the nd16 that came from dji so you want to make sure you get the dji logo to the top of the drone right there it's pointing upwards and then once again put it on see i've got it on an angle and now i'm going to spin it clockwise there we go it's locked in place it's that easy now just to show you a comparison you can see the filter that dji includes is very very plasticky it's not going to last very long so i'm just going to show you a free well filter here let me just get the box open it's child proof so i'm having difficulty oh my god free well <laughs> this is like opening a medicine bottle okay so these are the ones from free well they are made out of aluminum and glass so unlike the dji ones which are made out of plastic and glass with maybe one coating of a filter of an nd on it whereas these ones will have multiple coatings that can last for years you can rub it with your finger you can wipe it off many times and the coating won't come off on the dji ones the coating will come off after a while so that's why i say the dji ones are just to get you started so you can just get started all right let's go fly this i've got the nd16 on from dji i'll fly it around here and uh and then i'll switch it to the nd16 from freewell you should not see a difference between the two filters because they're both nd16 the difference is as i mentioned just the number of coatings on it and the construction of the filter itself All right, so on the Mavic Air 2, you have normal mode right here, which is about this fast. Zooms off, there we go, bring it back. And you have tripod mode for slower filming, which will start off fast, but not fly as fast. There we go, that's the fast I can get it to go. And bring that back. And then you have sport mode which turns off all obstacle avoidance, which is very fast, like this. And I'll bring that back. Whoa, gotta watch out. It's fast. All right, the drone is up there. I'm in normal mode, and I'm gonna shoot it out to the edge of the island. Let's see what the speed says on here. If you look at the bottom left hand of the screen, it's gonna give me a meters per second speed readout. So just in case my screen's not recording right now, it's saying I'm doing 11.1 meters per second. 11.1 meters per second, it's not exceeding it. That is the fastest I can go. Okay, now I'm gonna put it in sport mode and the same thing, and let's see what the speed is, difference. Here we go, full blast forward. So we're up to 15, 16, 17, 17.8, 17 17.9, 18, 18.1, 18 18.2. 18.3 18.3 looks like the max that's pretty decent as luck would have it the battery in this here camera died because this video went on so long so let me just sum up super quick this here drone who's it for well it's for anybody who's got 799 dollars us that's uh, that's for sure there is nothing on the market that touches this 799 this is incredible if you're a beginner, this will be the best drone you ever buy and you'll keep it for five years and still love it after five years. If you're a pro, somebody like me who has a ton of drones and you need a drone to, you know, take every now and then as a backup or as a B-roll drone, this thing is incredible. On the DJI Inspire, there's one feature that I use that drone for, and that is sort of like a visual point of interest. I just draw a box around some object, I fly the drone, the gimbal turns on the camera, keeps tracking that object. 
this has it. So it's like incredible that a $799 drone has technology like from the Inspire built right into it. It is really, really amazing. So honestly, if you're even considering getting this drone, get this drone. If you don't know where to buy it from, I bought this one. Like every drone I buy, I buy every drone from the DJI store. Reason I buy it from the DJI store is because the price you see is all you pay. That includes shipping, that includes customs, duties, taxes, everything. And not only that, they give you a percentage of your money back on the store so that you can buy something else. I'm serious. It's pretty darn decent. So I buy it from the DJI store all the time. I don't know why everybody does it. You don't pay all the stupid little taxes of your state or your country. Anyways, I'll put links below to where you can get this on the DJI store. If you're going to get one, get it from there. It's pretty awesome. Also, these filters from Freewell that they sent me. I haven't tried them all, but I've always used Freewell filters in all my drones. Quality is much better. I know who makes the filters for the DJI Mavic Air, and I know the quality they're made at. So uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to last you very long. You'll be lucky if you get six months out of them. So you're probably going to want to pick up some really good filters because after a while, you're not even going to use them, especially if you get the oil on your fingers all over the glass it's going to rub off the coating. So yeah, put links below to where you can get the filters as well. And your box will not look like somebody just tore into it like I did. And if you're so excited about the Mavic Air 2 and you haven't seen an unboxing yet, I actually have an unboxing coming next. Yeah, it's a long video, but my unboxings are really, really, really short because what I do is when I get a product, I unbox it immediately and take a video of the unboxing. And that gives you my first impressions when I look at it and go, Ooh, this looks great. Or this looks cheap. And you'll see my impressions are in the unboxing video. So you might want to stick around and watch that. But for now, I'm going to say, guys, this has been a long morning flying this thing and doing all sorts of tests with it. I've had it for a week, so I'm really loving it. Man, am I ever loving this drone. So for now, I say if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it very much. Stick around and watch the unboxing if you want. If you have questions on the Mavic Air 2, just post them below. I'm sure I covered almost everything, anything of importance anyways. Oh, and I should mention the flight time on this thing is quite long. It's I don't know if it's as good as the Mavic Mini, but it's pretty close. You know, I can fly for a long time on those batteries and the range. I can't do a range test because I'm in Canada, so don't ask for a range test. But here flying it around, I have never had a problem. I have flown this all over the place, over trees, forests, everything. The reception is outstanding. So that says a lot for what they put into this drone. It's really good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Here comes the unboxing. See you later. Bye. And now we're at the part of the video that everybody loves because I do unboxings like nobody else. I do them super quick. So this is the Mavic Air 2 Fly More Combo and check out the bottom ADS-B AirSense. Take the top off and we have everything's in the shoulder bag. Looking at the shoulder bag with the shoulder strap, you could see it's typical DJI quality. They always make something that's practical yet fashionable. Unzipper the top and what do we have? And here we have, well, everything. Little Oreo cookie protectors on each of the motors. First impressions would be they took a Mavic Pro and just shrunk it down. It just feels like I'm giant. I'm a giant with giant hands holding a Mavic Pro. I love they put the idiot proof labels on each of the arms. I wonder if they had a lawsuit with somebody pulling the arm the wrong way. So they had to put stickers to say, no, A goes this way, not that way. The rear arms fold out just like a Mavic Pro. Now it is kind of odd. I was holding it here thinking, geez, I wonder how heavy it is with the battery, but the battery is in it already. And uh, it's not very heavy. It's actually extremely light. I'm just curious. I have to check the weight. 560 grams. Maybe I've been working out. I don't know. Now I like that the Mavics all have their name on the arms because they all look alike and you can really mix them up. But check this out. The ADS-B. That's a sticker and you can tell they were putting them on pretty quick. It's not really the straightest. I'm sure everybody's got them going all over the place. If you have the DJI Mavic Air, the number of sensors on here are identical. You know, two in the back, two on the bottom, two in the front. It's all identical. Nothing on the sides. On the right hand side is where you put your micro SD card right down there. And on the right side, this is your USB-C port. So you can connect this to your computer, do your firmware updates or connect it to your computer and take files off the internal memory. If you wish, probably you could probably take the files off the micro SD card too, I would assume. The batteries are not very big, 3,500 milliamps total on this battery. It's a three cell battery. Take off the gimbal guard, the camera gimbal guard, and there's our beautiful camera. And we have a nice three axis gimbal. So when you're drone does this, camera stays straight. Drone does up and down like this, camera stays straight. And when your drone is yawing because the wind's blowing it, camera stays straight. Does feel very nice in the hands though. Nice drone. Well constructed. What else do we have in here? This huge thing right here. Pull this out. What's inside? We have 
another battery, a second battery, so three in total, North American power cable, power brick to recharge the batteries. Charging tray for three batteries. Over here we have the controller. Joysticks are hidden up front. Typical buttons on top, everything well laid out. And I love these little rubber handles here. It really holds on nice. The last thing in the bag would be up here. They put all the little tiny accessories up there. So you can see I have a USB cable. I have the cables for different phones. So if you have an Android phone, you would open this up and take out one of the cables out of there to match your Android phone. You also get this really tiny box that most people would probably throw away, but don't because it includes three filters right there. And finally, you get this unit here, which has two USB ports on it and an attachment at the bottom for your battery. So you just take one of your batteries, say this was fully charged. I could attach this. They hook together like this, click in, and then this battery will charge up the USB ports or any USB items I stick in there. So, you know, if I want to charge my cell phone or something because I'm not flying and I have a full battery. And finally, you get this box. Three booklets, one's a quick start guide, the other one's just accessories, and the other one's fly more combo. And you get two bags of props so you can crash all you want. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes my review of the Mavic Air 2. It's a pretty cool drone, pretty impressive. If you don't have one, I'm gonna post links below to where you can find it on the DJI store. I bought this from the DJI store. I buy all my drones from there that are DJI because the price I pay is the price I see. So when you look at this on the store through the link below this video, you're gonna see a price, that's all you pay. That price includes taxes, shipping, customs, duty, right to your door. Most times they arrive by DHL courier. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you in a future video where I review more drones. Not just DJI drones, but all the brands out there because everybody deserves their time in the spotlight on the Captain Drone channel. All right guys, take care, catch you in the next one.